Hi hey everyone, New England Gardening here on this Friday, June 21st. And uh, water barrels, well it was topped off last night after I emptied it. I don't know what size this is, um, 60 gallon, I don't know if it's 100 gallon. But um, yeah, it was empty. I don't, real I don't realize how much water you can use uh, just watering. We had, uh, I think it was 96 degrees yesterday. And then we had a front come through, got another thunderstorm and quickly filled this up around 7 o'clock yesterday evening. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd take the camera out and then take a look uh, at this unorganized garden. And I haven't done too much. I have some tomato plants in buckets that are really starting to take off now. Um, been keeping an eye on the clover here then, and the bumblebee, real bumblebee, working the flowers. I saw a honeybee, so I'm still hopeful that there's a hive around that might give me a swarm, but I think uh, whoever has the bees is probably managing them properly and is preventing them from swarming. I hold out hope. Yeah, so I have Cherokee purple, this one here, and these two smaller ones are some hybrid cherry tomato, uh, but they're just starting to take off in the last week. I think they've only been in these buckets for a week and a half, and they're just really, I have to, I put these cages on because I discovered a groundhog in the yard, and the groundhog I also discovered, they love echinacea. So they just chopped off a bunch of echinacea, so I've been putting these little scraps of uh, hardware cloth and anything I, I have to try to protect some of these plants. Um, there's an unmanaged area here with some borage and a couple of blueberry bushes. And then there's my vermilionaire. And I don't know if I showed this. I purchased this. It was down. It was just cut off with a couple of uh, nubs on it. Um, this is something I recently discovered. Lilac Crush. And it's a perennial. I think it's got some a swamp something, uh, some other name. But I think most hibiscus don't. I didn't know there was a variety. I think this is actually native to New England too, but this is probably a hybrid perennial hibiscus. So again, for keeping the hummingbirds in mind, um, I've only seen hummingbird twice. You now the wind's picking up. And uh, working the vermilionaire. I have not put out a feeder. Uh, this just blew up this year with the raspberries and I had a raspberry plant one of many that I had salvaged from plantings from orders from Johnny Seeds and never put them in the ground but they'll just directly go into the ground from the pot and evidently even though I have hardware cloth on the bottom of this for the any moles or rodents um, they just sprung up this spring all throughout this. I think I finally figured out what this is, but for the life of me, I don't recall. I think it's a linden tree or American basswood. And <laughs> there's actually a couple of these trees uh, on, a, on a side street. And I noticed the fragrance. They have these, these bell-shaped... Um, what is that, like uh, Lily of the Valley type of clusters? They have these clusters of, of brown flowers, very fragrant. And I know I was looking for things for uh, pr pr to provide nectar for honeybees, but uh, I know I planted them because I had them in individual cells, and then I transplanted them to the larger pots. And this pot, another example of it, just grew into, through the pot, into the soil. So I might actually put that um, 
on the city uh, patch there between the sidewalk and the street. It, it gets to be a pretty big tree though. But yeah, I think that's what it is. I thought it was a bush at first. But I've got these other two here that sort of die back when they get stressed. So I sort of up-potted one of them and the other one I gave it some protection. Put a pot, a larger pot around it for heat protection. And they just promptly came back with uh, new growth. Did have some strawberries from plants that I put in the greenhouse. Um, there's another one of the aforementioned raspberries. I think it's like Anne, A-N-N-E, might be the variety. I didn't like the, the golden yellow ones. I don't know what the variety name is, but sort of tasteless. It was kind of bland. The red ones are a lot sweeter. I did not have any success a couple of years ago. I purchased a new thornless variety of blackberries. Supposed to be hardy in my zone, zone 6B, but I didn't didn't make it. I never ventured into buying some more plants. Um, here's another example of I think the rabbits did this, chopped off. They just love the buds. So that's some variety of daisy that's got a nice red. Oh, I just seen a yellow jacket go into this. I, I already knocked out a nest out of this thing, and there's a yellow jacket going into it. Uh, the wren's fledged. I don't think I ever showed you the wren's in the box on the opposite side. They took over chickadees that arrived earlier, and they bossed them out, I guess. I don't know if there were eggs that they destroyed, and they, but they took over the nesting box. And raised what sounded like a good, good amount of uh, fledglings, and they... I think yesterday, maybe the day before yesterday, they left. Or yesterday morning, I noticed. Uh, here's my figs. Extent of my figs. These are actually the largest figs right now, is on this um, Col de Dame Blanc, UC Davis. I don't see any sign of fig mosaic virus. This here is Black Madeira. This is another Black Madeira. And uh, this this has got a really bad shape to it. I got this damage. I don't know how I got this damage. I don't know if that's... I don't think that was frost damage. Some odd damage that it's recovering from. But uh, I was planning on doing some air layers. I got these tall, blanky branches. Um... Those are the strawberry plants I need to get some strawberries from. I remembered to plant um, this Mexican sunflower, which really provides a lot of uh, flowers for butterflies um, later in the season, in the fall. In the fall. And uh, it's just started taking off. so. Got to figure out where I'm going to put those. I just brought this gooseberry plant in because the chipmunks are just exploding this year. And uh, these are starting to turn. A couple more tomato plants. I think those are both Cherokee purples, hopefully. Um, of course, I planted more seeds than I really needed to. I forgot about this. Uh, it was in the cellar. So, um, brought that out off. It's going to provide a bloom or not. Uh, I think I finally solved the aphid problem on these. These are all from, these are all um, red hot pokers from seeds from last year, from the plants that I grew from seeds. And for some reason, aphids love these. And how they got into the house, but then they just took off when I brought them outside. I tried to acclimate them at one point. I think I burned them because I just threw them out in the full heat of the sun. Brought them back in and just kept on using my fingers to 
get off the aphids. But then I recall someone said, you just take, I did have some uh, insecticide for vegetables, mix that up uh, in a little spray bottle with some uh, dish detergent, a dish uh, soap, and then I crushed in a garlic, a garlic clove. Evidently, um, aphids don't like that, and that seemed to work. So these two are the strongest. They're really taken off. Uh, I really haven't lost any. They look like this one's still hanging in there. It's the weakest one. And so I'm hoping that eventually they'll make it. Um, yeah, some more pepper. I got these pepper plants. Um, I'm supposed to pinch off the top, I guess, to get stronger growth. So it looks like that's due. A couple more pepper plants here. Some type of sweet pepper. Oh, of course, that's faded. Um, yeah, I don't. I've, I've got the, the seed back inside. But these are really starting to take off. I don't see any aphids. And I know if I put those outside, they'll immediately get eaten too. Oh, there's a couple of strawberries. Now that one's, I wonder if that one's past. Yeah, it looks a little past, but I want, let's give it a try. It's probably like sour or something. Oh no. Ah. That was really sweet. I'll take this one too. Not as ripe, but. That was good. They do not like this um, native soil. I think they like a richer soil. Um, as soon as I pulled these in, of course, they had all these runners, and the runners died because they were already rooted. Um, so I'd like to get some newer plants for next year off of those. But, uh, yeah. Brought out my satsuma, but I don't think it likes this soil. That's the orchid bark that I use. I think the, the bark breaks down and maybe it's too alkaline or something like that, but these flowers have just been stuck here in limbo and they've got like a pale green. Uh, they were paler yesterday. Uh, this, maybe this is, this is supposed to be nitrogen deficiency. So I do have um, I do have some plant food, citrus plant food from um, the online citrus place. Um, this might be from Logies. I, I forget where I got this one from. Uh, got the vermilionaire in the ground here really taken off. Um, they did get beat up by the sun. I didn't uh, transition them. Look at these daisies, they're lower level daisies. And they survived the winter. Got this, this was really showy last year. This plant in the back here didn't produce, it was kind of stunted, but it, it just took off again. And is on par with the other two that was in front. It's a cardinal flower. Um, there's an echinacea I was trying to, <laughs> I think it's been off limits so far because it's up a little bit elevated. Um, I'll put this tomato cage around it. Um, I got a love-hate relationship with second nature. First off, sometimes the flower is really not that purple, and then overnight they will wilt. So I think they get they get too much water, um, or there's some nematode or something that attacks these, but. You'll have a healthy plant like this, and then overnight, the top will just droop over, and it won't look that healthy. Then it will spring back. This here, I thought this was an echinacea, because it's, it's tall. But then I looked at this leaf, and I'm looking at this, and this is what these do. You can see here, they've got this pale color coming in, and then when they open up, they get like this. And I'm looking at the leaf, and I'm like, wait a minute. But then the bottom leaf here, 
looks more like this. I don't know if there's some, was there a cross pollination maybe that went on? Because the, the, the top leaves have this serrated edge. But this doesn't, and this looks more like that. So, but this is a compact version, and this one here grew really tall. So I don't know what's going on there. These here, they're supposed to be Red Hot Poker. A lower uh, stock, so it wouldn't have to be supported. Produced no flowers last year, even though they, were, they arrived as pretty mature plants. This year, they're just huge. They're just huge, like, like really big, um, oh, I just, um, leaks, right? Look at the base on that thing. It's got to be four, four inches in diameter. And if I... If I don't get a flower stalk this year, I don't, I don't know what this is. Can it be a, a sterile plant? Can, can that happen? Or they need, it's a plant that would always have, uh, it survived New England, you know, winters, but yeah, it doesn't produce anything. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'll show you the other ones that I have, the standard Red Hot Poker, and they've got four flower spikes that are just starting to open up. I uh, have blueberries here that I put in these planters. And uh, something something smells there. I just, uh, something was trying to dig and I filled it in. And then it dug around. I left the, I, le I left the shovel in the hole. I, I filled it in. It dug around the shovel to try to dig it out again. And I think that's the uh, groundhog. I don't think it's the fox. I know there's something that I, this I was thinking was the fox I was trying to burrow, make a little home underneath the barrel here. Came in from either side here. Because it was around here. But uh, I don't know if they put out a, a, a musk type of smell, the groundhogs. I gotta get in there, clean out that jungle. Uh, here's a new acquisition. This is another, uh, uh, let's see here, heritage type of apple tree, Spitzen. Another uh, new world, or brought in in the, like, like the 1600s. I think this was from in New York, upstate New York, where the other one was a Roxbury Russet. From Roxbury, Mass. Um, yeah, just got that in. That's been in the ground for a couple of weeks now. Thought maybe I put it in too late because it got the heat wave, but I've been keeping up with watering and put some mulch down around it, and really no wilting issues. Here I've got Monera coming into bloom. That usually attracts the hummingbirds. That goldenrod here, which grew a lot shorter when it was on the front yard and drier soil. Um, that's a good source of pollen. I know about nectar in the fall for honeybees. Uh, another one of these stray raspberry plants that's uh, left over from Johnny's seeds. This looks like a red one too. Some more Minerda. No apples this year. It was very hard. We had a mild winter. There were some flowers, but then it got cold. It wasn't frost damage, but I think it was lack of insects. It was just the weather was strange, and there weren't many insects, or any, uh, in the spring. Now we got this spot here. I just looked it up. I forget the name of this. It. It's a fungus. Um, yeah, I wanted to clean out all the grass around this, put mulch down around here. Because that's uh, one of the plants that has escaped um, notice of the groundhog. And I think this is a plant from seed pack from Johnny's Seeds. And you can see 
I believe these are native, these bees here are all native species. And they love these, uh, these plants here. Um, foxglove, I don't know, I had this dull color that was the predominant um, plant that flowered. One of them in there, okay. figure out which one has a darker purple. And I was thinking I need to get the seeds off of that one. But it's really a dull, I'm not, I'm not impressed from it. You see these pictures of foxglove on the seed packs or the websites that are selling these and they have these spectacular dark colors and these are pretty dull looking. So I know that sort of wild daisy. Um, but yeah, this one here, they, they're not touching that as much as they are. Whatever daisy this is. It's a nice, nice breeze. I'm not gonna complain. It's pretty hot yesterday. But uh, yeah, some more. I just realized these were turning sort of yellow because I had the saucer on the bottom of these and they were waterlogged. So hold off on the watering on this and let them dry out. Um, I wonder if I get a couple of blueberries here. I saw someone on the uh, on YouTube had a channel where they had uh, I don't know if they made them themselves. There was a square shaped bag, same material, and it had a zipper built into it. So it would be nice if that you could make like this wire frame and then the have the bag on it, or in this case, some type of round thing. But um, yeah, these end up, they're getting pretty big, and I know this wouldn't last with, without this netting on here from the uh, robins in particular, and the blue jays. So those are good, so they're not, you know, not going to be too ripe, but I'll give them a try. No, oh. they're pretty good. Um, I have bags of frozen blueberries from last season. I was meaning to do a blueberry pie video. Because I think blueberries have natural pectin in them. You don't have to add, you know, too much pectin. You just sugar and blueberries and a, and a cram cracker pie shell. Let's see, let me go show you the uh, Red Hot Poker. So here is the Red Hot Poker with uh, three, uh, four flower spikes opening up. And it's, it's not that tall. So I think they'll support, uh, I had no problem with them. I think I did put in one uh, plastic post to support one of the flowers last year. They're more yellow this year than I think they were last year. They were a little bit redder. Maybe that'll change as they open up. But um, yeah, get this another Johnny seed pack flower here that's still blooming. Here's that example of you know, it's not that bad. Echinacea. It's not. It's still it's not drooping. There's a nice purple flower there, Echinacea. Some more uh, Manega, Bee Balm. Oh, here's an example. I knew there was, there was one. And they'll do this. So, I don't know what's going on there. Then they look like this, initially. So it's... Then I have this volunteer butterfly bush, I'm pretty sure. I don't know how it got here, because I never really noticed seeds off of a butterfly bush. Got two in the back, and I got pretty sure that's what that is. Don't know how they propagate. Uh, yeah, African basil right there. Blue African basil. So. They did also plant uh, comfrey throughout the yard. Supposed to be a beneficial plant. I seen this one 
Japanese gardening website, which they bring gardening to an art form on this particular website. I use, I'm pretty sure, I gave it some thought, I think it was, I was wondering what they were using. They, they use this plant, they chop down, and they have this, uh, like, stoneware pot in the ground. And they almost have, like, the, it's sort of like, I was wondering what it reminded me of. And it's sort of like those, um, that sport, um, what's the name of that sport where they take that, uh, God, I don't know why I can't remember the name of that sport. But they take a, a large, um, round with the handle on it, they push it across the ice, and then they, they sweep any, they sweep in front of it as it's traveling, they have to get it in a certain, I don't know why I can't remember the name of something like that, but, um, it's almost like that, uh, that thing that they throw as a weight on top and then they cover it up and then they take the tea out and they use that for uh, for fertilizer so I know you use comfrey for making um, fertilizing tea for the garden but it's also like a chop and drop thing and also you people use it for border to keep um, grass from intruding into a garden bed it's another thing that's, that is used. But, uh, yeah, got Russian sage here. Another one over here that's sort of in the shade. Been meaning to move it. But, um, it's right here. That's some, uh, honeysuckle. Uh, peonies really good this year. I had a lot of flowers off those peonies. Plants grew really strong. I had this red one here that was kind of weak looking for several years or a couple of years and then just really came back. I've got another one here that was sort of original to the yard. Uh, it's a pale white color. So anyway, I got these, I don't know what these vines are. I think they came from like uh, seeds for bird feeders. They're out throughout the yard. I try to pull them up because they got these roots, these that spread out through under the ground. Um, runners is an example of it, and they they just keep on spreading throughout the yard. I don't know, just showed up, it's taken over, pull it up when I can. But it climbs on everything. You can see here, it's climbed up on top of here. <clears throat> You know that right there I've got that milkweed there non-standard milkweeds still comes up successfully but I don't think it's I've never seen any caterpillars on it other echinacea that I'm trying to protect this one here got chopped down it was a really big plant healthy looking and then I saw the groundhog over here and didn't notice that it chopped on this until I came out to inspect the damage. Thought it was gone because I hadn't seen it for a while. I, st I still haven't seen it for a while. But I discovered that those holes, the uh, uh, renewed hole next to the shovel today. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So that's about it on the garden tour. Have. Uh, My magnolia tree here I cut down. It's funny, I cut this tree down and I noticed one of those like hanging basket type of nests on the side here between this uh, stone, Swiss stone pine. And I think it's the native species. First I think it was a cardinal. I think it's the native species of the sparrow. Got a sparrow that has, the male has reddish uh, head and front. And I think they make those nests, or finches maybe. They weave nests. So, yeah, I guess not a good idea to put this climbing rose. I think it's Bradford, something like that. Climbing rose. I'm probably messing it up. Never got around to making the trellis for it. So it's not a good location right there because it's just completely hidden by the goldenrod. 
So that's about it. Yeah. Oh, you know, I did have apricot on this one apricot tree here that I was just showing you, the larger one. And they just fell off. You look down them sideways and they fall off. I thought I thought critters were taking them, knocking them off, but they just fell off. Just touch it with your finger and they'd fall off. So, very odd uh, for stone fruit and apples this year. Only reliable thing is just stick with uh, blueberries. As long as you can protect them from the birds and the critters, you get a good crop of blueberries every year. <clears throat> Uh, I wish I knew what was going on with this supposed red-eye poker. So this is the New England Gardening. I'll leave it there. Another uh, season probably getting away from me, but I did plant some giant sunflower seeds and watermelon and cantaloupe. This is uh, Rubecchia, another, another flower I was keeping honeybees in mind again. And they had problems with aphids too. Maybe they still do. Yep, they still do. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've just been doing this. Maybe I'll spray them with um, garlic spray again it's always something oh yeah maybe they benefit from being out in the yard uh, in the full sun it really stunts the growth on these hmm. okay This, well, you know, I do have, last thing is, let me show you some cuttings. I have um, I-258 and then another variety. I'll have to go look it up again. Um, I actually had to get these cuttings from England. was skeptical on, on whether they'd arrive or be intercepted, but there was no soil involved, so I think either customs missed it or they just... Uh, it's only a thing when it's concerning soils. Uh, I received two cuttings of this new variety that seems to be, uh, have some buzz about it and uh, broke down. Even though I think these, these here had, cut, these were cuttings that were left over after I had decided to get rid of all figs. And then I ended up throwing them in the soil or uh, uh, propagating them, getting them to root. And I ended up back, and it's, I swore I was going to uh, get any more varieties, and I ended up buying off of eBay I-258 and this other variety. Even though I, I, I almost bought a plant from um, Figbid for this variety, but let me go show you what's going on in the cellar. I don't see any roots yet, but. Okay, so what I have here is Hativ de Argentile and I-258. So I purchased two cuttings uh, of native uh, de Argentile Hativ. Um, UC Davis, I had uh, successfully rooted a plant. I had a plant and we really struggled, but I did get a couple of um, figs that were very unique. It, had, it were very sweet. But they had a, like a spicy note to it, like, um, I don't know how to describe it, ginger or cinnamon, or there was a spicy note to it, which was unique. And I sold it a long time ago, and of course you can't get cuttings anymore from UC Davis. And uh, so I decided I wanted these two. That's not the one I was thinking of. Um, there was another variety that I still am eyeballing, but... Yeah, two, some thicker cuttings and some thinner cuttings of I-258. Got some leaves and 
waiting to see if any roots form, if I'm successful with ruining any of these cuttings. So, just end it there. This is New England Gardening. Thanks for watching.